Welcome to this UniLogic tutorial. UniLogic is the complete application development environment for our Unitronics Unistream control platform. Hello, my name is Ophir Levy. I'm an application engineer at Unitronics. In this tutorial, we will review Unistream IO modules and expansion options, learn how to add IO modules to our project and configure them, see the IO structs, rename the IOs using alias name, and add Unicom modules. As you know, we have two types of panels, 7 inch and 10 inch. The CPU is attached at the back of the panel. On the 7 inch panel, we can attach on a DIN rail shape up to three slim IOs or Unicom modules. On the 10 inch panel, we can attach on a DIN rail shape up to 5 slim IOs or 4 Unicom modules. Please note that the Unicom modules must be attached directly after the CPU. We can expand the IOs using expansion adapters. There are a few types of expansion adapters. Expansion adapter that does not include the power supply can support up to 8 IO modules, including the modules which attached on the back of the panel. Expansion adapter that includes power supply can support up to 16 IO modules, including the modules which attached on the back of the panel. Now, let's see how we configure the IOs in UniLogic software. A new project is opened, and the first step is to select the controller model. In the Solution Explorer, Hardware Configuration, we will select Controller Model. Under Properties, we will choose the 7-inch model. The next step is to configure the I.O. modules. Now, in the Solution Explorer, we will select Local I.O.s and Core modules. In the main window, we can see the back of the panel with the CPU attached. At the right, in the toolbox, we have the I.O. modules, core modules, and expansion adapters. Using drag and drop or double click, we can add I.O.s or core module to the Unistream controller. Let's add the I.O. UID 0808T, which includes 8 digital inputs and 8 transistor outputs. In the Properties window, we can select a filtration rate for the digital inputs from 1 to 32 milliseconds for the two groups of the inputs. Once we added the I.O. module, a struct of the I.O. is created automatically. We can see the struct in the Tags window under I.O. tab. Let's open the struct to review its elements. It has array for the eight inputs and array for the eight outputs. Also, a status register. We can rename the inputs or outputs using the alias name. We'll click, for example, on input zero and set the name to main switch. We'll also rename the output zero, we'll call it lights. Now you can see, for example, that we can use these names in leather instead of inputs or output addresses. Let's create a simple net. and select the name from the IntelliSense, the main switch, and the lights. We will add two more IOs, the UIA 0402N, which includes 
four analog inputs and two analog outputs, and the UID 0016R, which includes 16 relay outputs. When selecting the UIA 0402N in the properties window, we can configure the parameters for the analog inputs and outputs. For each analog input, we can select the type 0 to 10 volt, 0 to 20 milliamperes, or 4 to 20 milliamperes. We can set the smoothing of the signal in three levels, weak, medium, or strong. And we can determine the linearization from row value, which in this case is 13 bit resolution, to the required units in your application. The noise rejection can filter specific frequencies which might interfere the analog signal. For the analog outputs, we can select as well the type and the required units according to the resolution. Now, as you can see, we are not able to add more IOs on the back of the Unistream. We can use the expansion adapters to add more IOs. We will select the expansion adapter from the toolbox. Let's select the UAG XK125 and we'll place it after the last IO module. As you can see now, we can add more IOs. Another nice option is that we can replace the locations of the IOs without the need to remove them first. The structs of the IOs will be arranged automatically after replacing or removing the IO modules. We can also attach the communication modules. I will remove first the UID 0016R and will add the UAC 01RS2 which has one RS232 port. Please note that the communication modules must be connected directly after the CPU. This concludes this tutorial about hardware configuration. You can find more information and example application in our website. Thank you for watching this tutorial and see you again.